Hey, y'all. Hey, it's your girl, Nadi, a.k.a. Queen Goddess Hope, coming to you with a new video. Today, we're going to learn how to add apps to your store and how to... source products from AliExpress and put them into your online store so we can make the collection, add apps, and put new products into the store so we can create the ultimate drop shipping store. So those will be the lessons for today. Hopefully it won't be as lengthy as yesterday, but overall you'll get the gist of what it is that we're trying to do here. So let's get ready. As you can see, we're on this main screen here, which is basically our home screen. Um, it claims that we have three of the six tasks complete. And once we complete everything else, we'll be ready to rock and roll. Um, this part is fairly easy, it's adding a domain. All this means is that you're creating like a custom domain, meaning you just want the astroshop.com. You don't want the astroshop.myshopify.com. At this point, I really don't care. Um, I'm not really going after anything right now. I have like 50 domain names. So that's like an easy, quick fix. But right now, I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, sales channels are basically the places that you wish to sell. So eventually, if you want to connect your Facebook or your Pinterest, as you can see here on the left-hand side with this link pop that I have no idea what that is. Um, you can add more sales channels. And then Shopify payments is to ensure that you're being paid out once you have your page up and running and for sale. So first I wanna add Oberlo. And I'm just gonna go into... Um, recommended apps so you can see all the apps that are available so some of the key things that i always add is like a trusted shop badge um just to say like hey this is a, a um safe place to purchase your products from so on and so forth but let me see if it's actually just going to let me pop up i was hoping that it would just take me to the app store. Like, what's good with that? There it goes. Yeah, Shopify app store. So here is the app store. It has probably thousands of apps at this point. Um, if you want to make a page that's strictly for your drop shipping store, I would recommend adding InstaFeed. That is actually really cool because at the bottom of your website, you'll see the connection of your Instagram feed in your store. I feel like Fashion Nova has that. I always buy clothes from here for my photo shoots because of this type of sale. <laughs> But remember, I said they always have sales going on. So as you can see here, it's like all right there. They always have a banner. They always have a sale. And then once that countdown ends, they'll create like a new sale. It's outrageous. So what did I say was on here? Their Instagram feed, right? If you usually click into like a... um. A item usually at the bottom it'll say like as seen on instagram or something like that they'll have it sometimes but i'm just not going to do this right now because i have add so back here all right so let's see the main focus is oberlo but here you go. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of sales channels. So if you want to sell on TikTok, if you want to do point of sale, which is um, in person, Shopify has like a tap and go type of thing, which is pretty cool. Um, I have that for like when I do pop ups events and you have like Etsy integration, which is really awesome, which is how you saw Printful on my thing before. Um, 
auto post, which is also really lit. I'm a big fan of like auto posts. I do that on Canva. So I don't really like go crazy with that. But that's that. I'm just going to click the back button. Then you have like products where you can drop ship, is, which is really where we're about to go. But I just want to keep going. Um, there's something that I wanted to do. I definitely recommend that you do like an email or SMS marketing, which is what we're more than likely going to do it. Um, whatever new store we come up with next. I want to do trust. Trust badge is called trust badges. Yeah. So now here's the other thing. Just like any other app, you're going to have to pay for app for apps on your website as well. A lot of things are free, but a lot of things are paid. So I usually use this one all the time and it tells you exactly how it's going to look. It gives you usually like a video, but it just basically says like secure checkout and it'll show you here how much these things cost per month. User discretion, however much money you want to spend, that's your prerogative. So what happens is usually like the first 500 visits will be free and then after that it'll start kicking in for other stuff. I used to get hammered <laughs> with one of those types of plans. I don't remember what app it was, but oh, I think it was like a McAfee app. It was like the first thousand visitors. And then after that, you had to pay per something. And I was just like, nah, I can't do that. No, I can't afford that <laughs> because it was like way too expensive. So I'm just going to see how this app looks and see what pictures they offer. So this is basically what I wanted. Um, so you can see, like, you can pay your secure checkout. Oh, it looks like it has some colors. You know, you could select your badges. This looks like basically what's on BU Times 2 website. And that's basically what I want to go for. It doesn't really charge you for anything else. It just says, hey, you can add this app. It's free. You just have a limited quantity of um, what you're going to have so I'm going to do that and I'm going to click install ordinarily I'm like the stickler I want to read all the terms and conditions I want to uh, opt out of everything so on and so forth so as you can see here the conversion is up show header show footer lotto is the font and you can see that changes on the right I'm an aerial freak, so more than likely I'm going to go with that. This is the Blue Martians font, Oswald is cool, I like to sometimes. I'm just going to keep it simple. I like things small. I don't like things taking over my website. Bar placement. So that means if you want to move it. Select badge. These are the basics. Um, I definitely want to have Apple Pay on there. Um, do I need anything else? If you have like a Coinbase or a Bitcoin, that's also favorable. I have that as well. Um, I typically would accept PayPal. Most people pay in PayPal. Um, we can obviously keep Visa, MasterCard. Um, I'm going to put PayPal because that's like the most popular. But truth be told, I'm going to have a PayPal badge. So I'm probably going to leave that the way it is. They have every pay under the sun. This is outrageous. Zelle eh, sounds cool, but mm, mm, I'm going to do fast shipping as a badge. I probably shouldn't even do Apple Pay 
because I feel like that automatically again is going to be on there oh you can do more oh sucky so Visa, MasterCard, American Express, PayPal. I always do Amazon Pay. I'm going to do Bitcoin. I don't rock with Coinbase. We do take Discover. And paper, save. Okay, I'm tweaking now. Enable. Hello, friends. Boom. So you can see it's now added. No problems there. You could probably remove that PayPal one since it's right in our faces. Let's see, more payment options. So PayPal and Venmo are there. I'm not really a Venmo person, but whatever. All right, so that is done. Next, we're gonna go back to Shopify App Store. I'm going to exit out of that. Go back into where did I see the drop shipping cluster? Store design is also really, really important as well because with the store design, like you can do zoom in on photos, like you can do left to right, you can do reviews. This is what I usually do for my reviews. Um, it's just easy. You're, they automatically send out emails to your customers after a certain amount of days, which you can elect. And at, underneath your product, you'll be able to see the reviews. So you have that as an option as well. This one is like the same family of what I usually use for banners so i'll come back into that later um i really want to click on i just want to search for a because i don't want this to be 100 days long all right so I still have Oberlo no more. I know what to do. Ha ha. Oberlo. Dot com. We already joined. How come I have to deal with this again? Mobile swipe in design and Oberlo. I guess that other joint is not going to work. They suck. Add app. Loki feel like I have one already. Oh man, what's the name? Mm.
I'm trying to verify. Um, that's on set. I might just have to create like a new account because who has time? So I'm just going to do sign up. That was that fast. Verify. Email. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to sign in. Looks like I'm in. So I'm going to do that. One default. Okay. I said no when they made me go. Okay. So. This is going to be a lot. <laughs> I'm going to pick astronaut. Because only a few things are going to pop up. Um, There are going to be like phone cases. Party decor, pretty much anything that you can think of is about to get flooded here. So if you can see here, it says import list, my products, my orders, store analytics. So the cool part is I'm going to pick a phone case Um, naturally. I had, it's funny, I have this phone case right here, but I definitely didn't pay $2 for it. So I have this phone case right here. And um, people always send me this phone case right here on Instagram. It's mad funny every time they see it. So I love that my um, followers, you know, see me and or see these astronauts and think of me. It's like the best branding and marketing that anybody could ever dream of. So I like these star projectors. I feel like they're really, really cool. So I'm going to add that on. Most definitely going to add one of these cell phone cases on there. Once again, I think it's cool. I'm going to probably add this space outfit. I love this little Lego person. That looks really dope. So right now, I'm looking for at least 10 products to put on my drop shipping store. One, five of them, or at least four of them because I feel like the row is four. So we're going to at least put four action figurines like so. We're going to put at least like two cell phone cases and like two party supplies. See what I'm talking about. Um, we're definitely going to put like these air buds here and maybe like a tie or a shirt or something like that. Something that's not there. So if you can see here, it's ridiculous how it's a dollar, right? And if you go to Amazon, you can see how things are selling on there. So like I said, I had like this cell phone case right here that I probably paid at least 12 to $15 for. So they're going to say, which size do you want to put on here? Which one do you want to put on here? So you can have your colors. This is the one that I had. So now if I go to Amazon.com and then I type in <clears throat> Martian or Astronaut Run. So in case 11 minutes. So now, didn't we just see this? Didn't we just see this? 
you see these prices, right? You just saw this. Now look. You got that's two ninety nine, and then look at the actual price. This one is selling for nine ninety nine. So either way, they're making a three time markup for that product. These little guys are selling for fifteen dollars and thirteen dollars. Again, how much were these cell phone cases for? Three dollars and forty four cent. Three dollars. So <laughs> you have to think about how everyone is getting their products from the same places and then just upselling them for X dollars and drop shipping them without any issues from AliExpress. Right. Thank me later. So what I would like to do is you see here it says add to import list. Super duper simple. It's going to tell you that this shop has a 93% trustworthy feedback, which is very, 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 very important because the last thing you want is a, to push a product to your store that has three, four, five percent or just terrible feedback, terrible reviews, you know, regarding customers, so on and so forth, because you're not going to be happy with that. You know what I mean? So you see how their pictures have words and things like that on it already. And this is really where the drop shipping and Canva comes into play because these are all cool pictures, sure, but no one wants Chinese lettering or anything like that on their backgrounds. You know, like I am really, really big on just plain white like I don't want to see nothing on there but the product it just makes the website look super clean and I feel like it also just makes it a little bit more reliable so we're going to add that to our import list and now if you see here if you click on import list I don't care about you Leo um it's right here and it's going to tell you depending on which profit you get it's going to be between two dollars and 83 cents and three dollars and 25 cents now, here's also another key thing too. When you see it says edit product, you can take out all of this crap because I don't want to see that when I go to your store. I'm just going to put cute astronaut silicone phone case or cute astronaut case for iPhone. You know what I mean? And boop, take all of that extra crap out. And you're going to choose your collection. So right now, I don't know which collection I want to put that for. I don't know if I want to put Heal the World because Heal the World yesterday was intended for like wellness products, um, products that would be used to quote unquote heal the world. So I'm not sure what I want to use for that yet. And then tags, you know, we're going to do all of that later. I'd rather just do this one, two, three, and then go from there. Now, on the bottom, we can choose the price that we want to sell it for, or you can actually make your own price. And then it also tells you the quantity that's available. Now, because there is over 9,000, I would say this has a likely campaign to not sell out and you don't have to adjust it too, too much to what is going to happen. Also, other thing, because this list is forever going 12 miles in a day, I would say pick the product that you want the most. So do you want him playing the music and hugging the star only? Because if that's the case, I would prefer to keep those two products and that's it. I wouldn't keep any of these other products here, right? So I want to see what photo that is. They have so, so much. It's just like too much. And truth be told... All of this would flood to your store. Like, I, I don't have time for that. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to keep this one. I feel like it doesn't even tell me which. It just says for iPhone 7 Plus. I can't. I'm getting overwhelmed just thinking about this crap. It looks like that's the one where he's playing and this looks like the one that he's hugging the star. So, boom, here we go. So now I only want to do 
the latest iPhones. XR is like the version that's 10. So I only want to do 12 because that was the first 5G one. 13, 14. I want to take out 6S Plus, 11 Pro, 13 Pro Max can stay. I want to take out that. All right. So now I just narrowed down our entire list. And I want to change this price. I'm going to change that later. Because we would have to do every single price. So now, if you see here, this is saying we're going to ship to the United States. And this is going to say the shipping method. Now, I don't suggest that you use this method. And typically, when you're using AliExpress, it's going to take at least 25 to 30 days to get to your customer. That is the only downfall. However, most of the time, people understand that this is coming from overseas or whatever the case may be, so they know that it's going to take a while. So I wouldn't really trip. So now this is saying that because we're shipping through this other place, it's going to cost you $9.75 to get to you. So we're going to change the price of this product to about We're going to double it. So it's going to be $18.99. Actually, I know what I meant to. My brain is like fried right now. Scroll. Save. Oh my God and Lord. Thank you, mate. Sheesh. All right. So now that is done, right? So I'm going to click save so that when it pushes over to the store, it's going to all go at the same time. And we're going to take out pictures. We're going to do like all of that jazzy jazz. So right now, as you can see, it only has seven pictures that are chosen. And that is it. And that's because it chose the phones according to the version that is being offered. Okay. So we're going to save that. And then we're going to push to store. This is not happening, and this is what we're going to check. Done. So that's one product. I want to add um, another product. I want to see if we can find, like, some type of, like, action figurine or something like that. I said I wanted to add the projector. So do I want him sitting down or standing up? I think I want to do this one. It costs more, so now I'm going to be able to also charge more. What is the likelihood that you'll probably sell these? No clue. They sell them at the dollar store for $5. I got one. So, <laughs> you know, chances are that you're probably not going to sell it. But the fact is, is that you're just adding cost variety to your shop. Once again, 97% feedback, 30, 93% trustworthy. You got Ali standard shipping. This is once again free. So what this means that is if we make this $49.99, it's going to cost us $27 to ship to our customer. And there's not going to be any shipping. So let's just say we make it $49.99 plus $3.99 shipping, right? 
That means that we're going to make $3.99 automatically on the shipping. And now we're going to make the cost difference, let's say $13 for something like that, on $12 on the actual price of the product. So same thing down here. You know, you're going to see the Northern Lights. They're going to have the pictures. All this stuff that's going to come with it. You're going to see these photos. Again, all of this stuff. And then you're going to be able to add these photos to your website as well. So I'm going to add this to my import list once again. And then I'm just going to go to a new product. This is still being pushed to the store. I love that I didn't clear out my cookies once again. Mad funny. Okay. We saw that on Amazon for like $20 too. We got the projection system. I was thinking about putting this other cell phone on there. Probably not though. This is kind of cool. It offers three different options, but it's going to offer a bazillion different things. So you got the Astro building blocks. Same, Pimpinski is interesting. I love this. It's like Legos. All right, cool. Add to import list. Now I'm going to put uh, space. Really? This is driving me crazy. The disrespect if it don't come up, like they don't respect us Martians. Outrageous. The disrespect is real. Like, what is this? Why is this? Where is this? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. What in the flu, Gazy? Maybe if I click on that one that was over here again. That's cool. I like this one. It was simple. I said it had a 100% rate. So I'm going to rock with that. What I'm also going to do is see if I can click on their store. How do I do that? I used to do that all the time. Hmm. Cake topper. Low key want one of these for my birthday. These are just so cool. There's <sighs> And they have a blue Martian. 
All right. I don't want no negotiations. 86%. Mm, I don't know if I like it. Mm. They have a lot of reviews, though. So maybe we'll just add it just in case. We could always just leave it and not send it over. What is this? Skateboard. That's kind of dope. But nobody's bought from there, so I won't even try it. Not today, bro. I do like this. It's like three-dimensional. Moon. Mm. What else do we want? All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five space things. Um, what else could I think of? Let's go out to that. Electronics. Special category. Women's clothing. Ah. Space costume. I made a pet store recently and we added all of those to here, which was pretty cool. This is insanity. Alien inflatable. That's disrespectful. I think there's a mouse in my room. I'm freaking out, but I'm trying to be calm. Unless if it's like under the crawl space or something, because I keep seeing a cat go under there. This is my life in the country. How to keep an eye on the time. Market Mondays is starting at 7.30. So I got like a half an hour. We got the space balloons. They got all the dominatrix stuff, okay? <laughs> Martian helmet. I usually sell my own, but 3D spaceman, he's cute.
These are patches. I think that's dope. I'm going to add that. You can charge like $5.99 for each patch. And they'll probably ship out really fast too. Which is dope. Uh, I think this is going to be our last page. <gasps> Look at that. That's like a humidifier. Now that's snazzy. It looks like they had gave me a quota. They trying to get money out of everybody for everything, Lord Missy. I was just wondering what this was really about. I don't think I like understand it really. And I feel like the pictures would be hard to adjust. I'm probably not gonna want that here, so I'm just gonna. Go back and remove this off of my ting, man. I got the cat bubble in here. I got two space outfits. These DIY iron-on patches. Iron-on astronaut patches. Uh, I don't need any of that. That's kind of cool, though. But we kind of making our own shirts. Like, I don't want nobody to do that on their own. Know what I mean? We're going to put that here. It's like a baby kid. All right, so they got all these sizes here. The highest is $31, but the price itself is $45. That's outrageous as F, okay? Change price to equal. 
Oh my gosh, that's insane. Let's see if thirty nine ninety nine works. Let's see. We can both put compare price on there. That's Shisha. I would never. I should not cost them or baby. So nobody use centimeters like what or not. I should buy one of these for myself. So now remember how I said that you can change the sizes around too? As you can see here, some of these are like out of order. So we're more than likely going to have to do that, lady. So this is saying it compares up to $65. And since the kid one is $39.99, we're going to make this $55. Maybe not. And in women on here. Whatever. I was going to say we can maximize on the guy one, but that would be sexist, huh? Right, push that to the store. We're going to change all of this up when it gets to the other side. I'm just trying to push this out as fast as possible. We got that. I should stand in balloon. I'm going to bring this projector over there. Plug-in rechargeable. <laughs> rechargeable. This is like outrageous. So I feel like I would want any one of these balloons. See how it's like $12? 
Max, I want any one of these balloons, no matter what they choose to be. So you, I feel like these 40 piece balloons, 20 piece balloons, 20 piece balloons, 40 piece balloons should be way more, which is crazy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let me see, so many of those. I'll change them all to the nine ninety-nine. And then what I'm gonna do is when it gets to the other side, anything so I could see the whole font, anything that's like these 40 style balloons, you know what I mean? We can make them more or we can make I don't know. I'm overthinking it, but I think nine ninety nine is her thing is more than enough. And then I'll also make this. Nine ninety nine. That way, if people are ordering these, more than likely, they just gonna be like, "Okay, we need to do whatever we gotta do for the party." People go ham with decorations, but whatever. Not my kid, and as you can see. They have ample stock on here and all of the pictures and so on and so forth. So we are good with that. My kid's going to drive me crazy. I already could tell because I'm talking mad shit. <laughs> oh, gosh. Mad funny. Mm. So now this cake topper is also like three, four dollars. But this has so much crap, like all the balloons, you know, all that stuff all over again. And it's like. Here we go again. DMX boys. I just wanted the cake topper. Like, I didn't want all of this extra. I do like those balloons. I do like the gift bags. It's only four gift bags, though. I don't even know what the heck that is. Tablecloth, cake topper. This is the homeboy. Those are the stars. Stickers. And I don't like that. I don't think we need... Stickers could probably go inside of the gift bag, maybe. Cake topper. I just wanted cake toppers. Maybe making shit difficult. Only cake toppers. Because this is stressing me out. But this high key got everything. Like, that's insanity.
I key about to negotiate with all this card. All right. Change price. Same price for everything. Imagine every year you having a party for your kid and every year you got the same theme. Welcome to my house. <laughs> oh, it's hysterical. Mini space. Legos. It's fire. Astronaut building blocks with mini light. With light. Ships from China with light. What does all of this extra stuff mean? Can we just have one? You're doing too much, baby. Cannot change price. This is going to be twenty nine ninety nine. In reality, it should really be like seventy dollars. Kid me, Legos are expensive as fuck. Thirty nine ninety nine. Nah, I'll keep it twenty nine. Don't judge, don't judge. Push the store. I thought this was cool because it looked like a cat UFO type of vibes. You could see that. Don't look happy. All right. Eight products here. Everything pushed out. So we have all of that stuff. Now let's go over here. We're going to exit out of that. And we're going to click products. Now, as you can see, everything pushed over here with their quantities for H. Now, as you see, these are apparel and accessories, so we don't need those. But what we need to do is get into every single product see what they built for us change up your descriptions we don't need a description here for all of that we only picked one product we didn't have all of these so We only did the one with the United Nations, this one. We didn't do the balloons. Right, so I'm going to delete this, delete this. And... Done. And we're going to delete this picture. That picture. That picture. That picture. All right. Toys. Toys. Legos. 
It's a building. It's a building. Windows. Is it GGO or GO? I don't know. There you go. So that way it shows up under see there but as you know everything has to be white so we're going to upload that photo into Canva and take that off because ew so we're going to take that upload download that and then mind our business next product so we got these two charts here so we don't need any of that <clears throat> They have all these pictures here, so we don't need these pictures, truth be told. Um, is there different colors? Yes, I don't need all of these pictures here.
remember how I said, sometimes they arrive out of order. So this is all you have to do to fix them. Extra small, small, medium, large, extra opportunity, done. So you can do for men, for women, for men, for women. You see how it's out of color order now. So now I'm about to do the same exact thing. Makes life 10 times easier. If you just stick to the same thing all around. And they didn't give men a pink as well. Mad funny. Three minutes. Well, oh, he's cute. Too bad he has to go. Wait, let's go back. I gotta see something. Yeah, see, these are all on the right background. I don't understand why people do stuff like that. It's so funny to me. download that so we can take out that name what does this say I don't know I gotta see what all of that says a little better on the bigger screen when I see it we don't need none of these pictures
All right, so once again, all of this description has nothing to do with what we're selling. So I don't think that it's best that we add any of that right now. So just says, um, prepare for any. Prepare for any space. Really, what order is that? So one of the reasons why I'm not changing whatever it is that they say, because I want to be sure that 
when it comes time to purchase from the merchant because the thing is once somebody orders this you have to now go to this website and actually purchase the items yourself which is why it says my orders so it's good to kind of keep your product list saved here so that when it comes time to go you have to click the ali source and then you order this on your own on behalf of your customer so like you would click here you know you would actually select buy or add to cart and once you you know sign in do your whole thing you would put your customer's information as a ship to party because now aliexpress is going to directly ship it to your customer on your behalf that's the whole point of drop shipping is that you're not physically touching the product. So this is a 100% drop shipping store, meaning that we are not touching the product at all. We're not touching the t-shirts. We're not touching anything so that the customer can directly buy the product from the merchant. And now you are buying the product directly from the manufacturer. Does that make sense? That's basically all that we're doing. All right. So for this one, I can just go directly to Amazon and just put in like anything that I want. In love with baby Martians. In love with You can put something way more detailed. You could go directly to Amazon and use theirs. The sales channel is just basically where you want to sell your product. Almost finished. I'm going to leave this one like this so you can see like what is plugged in and what is rechargeable. It's just basically showing you the USB ports. And that's really it. Nothing different there. I think I want to kind of like leave that plugged in version could only work appearance and design. Da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. I think I'm just going to leave all of this here. TBH. I'm going to see how it looks on that thing later. Excuse me. See, like, all of this, I don't like it. I mean, I like, I mean, I like that. And I didn't even choose all of those. 
I know I took this little chick out. I mean, I like that. Well, all the cake toppers are down here, so I might as well just move them down. What to do if I just have a cupcake topper? So I need two cupcake toppers. All right, so now I'm going to come over here and go to collections and put space party. Later on, I have to get to Market Mondays. I'm going to add a better collection photo. And I'm assuming now that you know how to do it, you can actually do it on your own. So the next time I come back, I'm either going to do that and then you'll be able to see me add it. And then I'll be able to update. That's what we're going to do next since I kept to what it is that we were supposed to do today. The next time I come in, we're going to have these photos updated. I'll do that with you on Canva once again and show you a couple of different ways to do that. And then um, we're going to... add a menu bar onto the website so that this is under space party why i'm going to put heal the world because it's like a silicone case so it's not a plastic case it took the pictures out what a mess plugged in recharge Space party.
Really, guys? Yeah. Six. I really can't. Forgot about this one because I was like, I needed to fix this before my OCD kicked in, right? Mm hmm. I'm getting anxiety because I'm not on work in one day. So um this content is not paid for by Earn Your Leisure Podcasts. Right, like we didn't even have any idea that that school was gonna be the fire test given to her, but it just shows you, man, when when people are aligned and, and they're putting especially with Dana's purpose right now, putting kids first and making sure that the education of you know, the kids of the future is there, you know, these are the outcomes. So it, it wasn't by mistake that we all ended up in the same place at the same time. Um, and we need to see more of that. We need to see more of that. It, it wasn't a, a competition of, who, you know, who's done the most. It was, a, it was really a, a compliment to see, like, yo, this is what happens when we all work together. So, again, shout out to Principal Brown and Farrell's Academy for uh, having us in the building. Absolutely. All right. Let's talk about it. Amazon. Let's, Amazon. Start, let's start here yeah. before we get to the bank situation. Amazon to lay off 9,000 more workers, which brings the total to 27,000 um, people. How do we feel about this? What does it say about the economy? What does it say about the tech sector? What, is, what does it say? First, uh, first. I'll, I'll just say the first thing, and it goes back to when we talked about it in December when they laid off 18,000 people and we saw Meta do it and we, well, not 18,000, we saw them do 11 and we saw Google and we saw Microsoft, Microsoft do it. There was a, these are the effects of the pandemic, mm -hmm. right? When you talk about a lot of the tech companies, how were they going to respond to the overwhelming demand on their product? Well, the response was to hire more people. Mm -hmm. When people have changed the way that they go about business, the way they go about lifestyle, the way they go about spending, there's going to be a change in your business and the change just happened to be, you know, especially for Amazon that people are going back outside and they're shopping. People still use Amazon, but there's an alternative to how they once were only shopping. And so this is, I look up the statistics, this is pretty interesting. Uh, between Q4 2019 and Q3 2022, their headcount increased by 93%. Jeez. 93%. Yeah. That's nearly almost 100% more people worked during that time than they had originally planned, so right? Even if you were creating a hiring board in 2019 going into 2020, you could have never imagined that this would be the increase of hires. And so what, what comes on the inverse of that when there need to be cutbacks? Some some people are going to, to lose their jobs. It's unfortunate. The count is like 27,000. Um, so this round of cuts is expected to impact the cloud computing, advertising, human resources, and Twitch units. Um, so a lot of gain. Uh, a lot of again cloud computing. Uh, it's unfortunate, right? Because these twenty-seven thousand. I know it feels like it's a number, but these are actually people. Yes. These people have families, and these people have bills, and it's unfortunate. But this is part of the economy, right? This, this is what comes with gross over hiring. There are going to be layoffs and, and cutbacks, and so it, it, again, it's unfortunate. Um, but I, I don't think this is the end. I think we're, nope. Because we're still. <laughs> We're still trying to figure out, and especially a lot of these companies in tech are trying to figure out what is the right medium. You don't want to underhire, um, but what comes with that, I know that you can stress this a lot, and is that. And then if this happens again, what are you going to do? Less people. And I think this is this is a prime case of it. A couple of interesting things, uh, like you said, this isn't going to be the last cut. Number one, so they're layering because a company can't effectively lay off fifty thousand people in one week, one quarter, one day that it's in shockwaves throughout the market. Um, number two, as they're transitioning to a new CEO, there's some dramatic changes that had to be made. If you look, the stock at one point was at 188.65. Uh, 
came down to 8402, which pretty much cut the value of the stock in half. Therefore, you had to make some adjustments. Um, number three, I don't like this for the workforce. I, I was doing some uh, analysis earlier, and without quantitative easing in 2008 through 2020, the supply of money that came in in 2020 and the bailouts that we'll talk about tonight, we have effectively been in a recessive market since 2019. Exactly. Right and they won't announce so it. Saying, if you're seeing pirate freeze, Matt has done the same thing, and they're also uh, no longer going to be hiring 5,000 more jobs than they plan to. These companies have to cut back, and they're also having to find ways to be more efficient um, in real time. Um, sadly enough, cutting these jobs will allow the stock to go back up. But even when I was talking to my brother yesterday, he oh, was saying, baby. you know, you used to be able to find some great deals on Amazon, but because of inflation, you are not finding as many. Um, Amazon is one of the top picks in the Red Panda Stock Club. It's been hovering around like 93 to 97 for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe in about another 8 to 13 months, it should get back to like 140, 111. They need to cut some more jobs and on the management side, they need to do a hell of a lot better job of being more efficient and getting their cost basis up um, in terms of net income and net revenue. So this is sad because this is not going to be the last of it. And this is why they're pushing AI at every angle that they can. GPT-4 was released. Microsoft now has their version. Um, but we're just seeing probably only like in the middle of each job list. Mm -hmm. So what does this say about Amazon as far as investing in the company as far as their stock is concerned. You know, it's Amazon's been a company that, you know, we talk about a lot. Um, as far as, you know, a good investment long term. Is it yeah. still a, is it still a good investment? Yes. Okay. One thousand but, but I like that seventy five and below. Like anything yeah. above that right now is and also it goes to back to business leadership. We cannot same with LeBron. Like we're kinda of taking LeBron for granted even though like he's in his last what two to three years. Um, we took Bezos for granted for a long time. Andy's a great executive, but Bezos was a superstar, rock star level CEO that over delivered. Um, he may need to come back to that seat for a couple of years. Um, Dang, years. Yeah. And I think you said it, and, and most people are like maybe you're confused by it, but yeah, these layoffs will probably mean that the stock is going to go up. And it's, we had this conversation last week when we were talking about Salesforce, when it was like, all right, we need to really figure out where our spending is and, and how we're going to cut spending. And one of those things that they do is, is lay off employees. Mm -hmm. So when they lay off employees, and now they have more money to make business more efficient. It's, it's a it's true. sad effect, but it's a real a real effect, right? Of mm -hmm. jobs. You, you want to make more money. So you That's say you like, you like it under $75, correct? Correct. All right. Uh, well, I think it all also speaks to just making work more efficient. And this can lead to a conversation. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but they've been pushing more and more about this four four day work week mm -hmm. situation. Yep. Uh, more and more companies are pushing towards that. Um, and I had a conversation to my barber, child I was in the shop today. He was listening. They were talking about it on the radio. Chris B, by the way. Appreciate that. <laughs> Very important. Very important. Um, so my this is my philosophy, right? Um because he's asking me, like, do I think the four-day work week is a good idea? And I'm like, I guess technically, but in our line of work, for instance, it's an everyday work week, but it's done not traditionally. So, like, the person that does our YouTube, right, his name is Rich, shout out to him. I get up in the morning, and I, I'll give him, like, tasks for the day. I try to do it before 10 o'clock. And then well, he just has to do it at some point in time. So he can mm -hmm. potentially do it. Five minutes before one o'clock or twelve o'clock, <laughs> anything, right? Like, and then you're done for the day. Um, but we we need to post content every single day. So that to me, that type of hybrid approach is what we're going into, right? We're going into the office and clocking in at nine o'clock and wasting time and leaving at five thirty. Like those days are over. I feel like you you have tasks mm -hmm. that you have that have to be completed. You can complete those tasks from anywhere. Yes. You can do a Zoom call if you need to have a, a conference, or you can just call somebody if you need to talk to somebody. There's no need to physically be there. So that cuts overhead as far as, um, and this goes back to the commercial real estate play, that cuts overhead as far as office is concerned. 
but it also cuts the amount of people that you need as well. Because mm-hmm. you realize you don't really need that many people because a lot a lot of people are getting paid to do nothing. Trim the fat. So trim the fat, extremely important. And not to call people fat because we are sensitive that people are getting laid off. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody wants to see anybody lose their job. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying as far as moving forward, I feel like more and more companies will look to see how you can get more efficiency mm-hmm. from your employees. And in my opinion, that's from the employees staying at home, having tasks that they have to be completed. It doesn't matter when you can do the task at one o'clock in the morning if you want. Facts. Just do the task. And I'm trying to explain to you working model, in my opinion. That's happened to me. Quickly tell a very soft truth that most people need to hear. The four hour work week proposition is being done and efficiency is going to be slung around so they don't have to give us full time benefits. Because they're not going to have most people work. If you are at eight hours a day, hello, Michael, um, and you're working four days a week, you're going to be at 32 hours. That's fine. They don't have to then give you full time. And I'm seeing this happen with some people right now. Like they'll put you right up to like 38 and a half, 39 hours to avoid 40 hours plus and giving you full benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, so please be careful as they are pushing this initiative of a four day week work week. Um, that you don't get caught in that trap of them trying to lower your benefits or your pay. And then subconsciously or subtly in corporate forcing you to do more while giving you less. Um, yeah, you see in France that um well you should This is you America. Should, well well what did you say? You said Talk about go ahead, wait. You said, no, no, no. You <laughs> said I'm just showing that I just want to declare what you said. You said be careful that they don't give you less doing less for doing yes. less you because should get less you should get less for doing less no they're going to do because it's it's shift. Is like they with our economy and then like notice whenever the banks collapse which is a sign of a recession right they have to bail out banks because Mexico's what the fuck just happened and quiet monopoly they always end up blaming blaming the people for destroying the economy it wasn't the workforce that that caused the collapse of svb or ftx or Bitcoin imploding from 60 down to 20,000. We'll talk about Bitcoin later. It wasn't the consumers that did that. It was the organizations and leadership that did that. But then, and always, watch. Ta-da! They're going to start putting some of this on black entrepreneurs and say that they were given risky loans and they didn't meet a certain risk profile, which reminds me a lot of two people. And for those of you who don't know, when the housing market collapsed, it wasn't because blacks and Latins got two and three houses. That wasn't it. We didn't have any credit default swap options on <laughs> right? It was hard enough. 2008. But you want to so make true. me think that we imploded a global market when, when they were putting exotic tranches together and selling them off in Germany and Ukraine and Russia and trading them like option directors. That's what we're always going to we always always get blamed this out on the black consumer side. So, yes, we want to make things more efficient, but mm-hmm. I also don't want us to take blame for this market falling apart when we did not cause that crash. Mm-hmm. That's important. Yeah, that's a fact. That's important. Um, and then also, what they have going on in France right now is riots in the streets because the president is trying to push the retirement age back. Mm-hmm. But we also, all right, two sides to this coin. Um, at some point, things have to change. Because the world is changing, right? So hours have to get cut back. The the retirement age has to get pushed back. If people are living longer, right? It's just common sense that the retirement age has to get pushed back. It's a strain on the... Or leisure has to be earned faster. Hello? Maybe the government of France is not doing that well by the... Anytime a government is trying to extend the retirement age, it is a sign that they have messed off the pension and government funds for you to retire. That's, that's the big bomb when that gets dropped, student loan debt, and where is the Social Security money at? Well, if, you, if you're if you relying on the government for retirement, then you're, you're, screwed, it. you're screwed anyway. I'm, be, I'm just going to be fully... 100%. Wait till they reveal that bump when they get on 60 Well, here, here's the thing. If you ever look at your... So this is important. Um, Social Security, right, is the government... And I just have all that money back. Retirement. That's what it was originally created for. But supplement is extremely important it was never designed to be the fully source of retirement but if you look at your 
your statement. You can go online and look at your um social security statement. Mm -hmm. It actually says the day what? that social security will be insolvent. It says it. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it it's, you can actually read it. I forget it's what scary. year it is, but I'm just, I don't know exactly what year it is, but let's just say it's like 2030. It'll say like in 2020, in 2030, uh, social security is on pace to be insolvent. It says it and nobody, <laughs> nobody reads No one it. talks about it. Nobody cares about it. And I, I, I learned this when I was an advisor. I used to actually go through it with my clients and like, look, I used to highlight it. You see right there, like they're saying that there's not going to be any money left. This is their way out. So when it does implode, if it does implode, they can say, well, we've been telling 20, you. 2033. Oh, yeah, 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 2033. Yeah, 2033. Yeah, we're, we're nearing. We're nearing. It's on, now, yeah. they can, of course, they can make changes. They can do bailouts. But as it stands right now, it's on pace to disappear in 2033. So you, as an intelligent person, should never plan. <laughs> if somebody said, okay, we, in 2034. Now, I'm on pace to divorce you in 2034. You prepared to get divorced. You don't you, you don't cry about it when it's ha they're telling you. Yeah. They're telling you it's gonna happen. Yeah. So relying on the government to save you is never a good option. That's why I don't respect them. <laughs> I need that money back. Now it's like the 70s. Give me the social security money back. Back from 62, which is what it is now. To 64, so two more years. Even, I mean, that's still younger. That's ridiculous. That's still younger than what the United States has. That's very reasonable. Yeah, that's not bad. The European so, yeah, like, my money back. Life, go explore, travel, and play with your grandkids. Yeah, basically, you gotta earn your leisure a lot faster. You're right, Ian. I'm, yeah, I'm with you. Basically, we just got, yeah, we gotta figure that out. That should be the, like, that's the goal. And they won't say it, but the reason that they're really mad at that kid from FTX is because he's the one who made the block hot. Meaning, I want to take that one out. Once he unveiled the corruption inside of the financial system, that was the thread that like destroyed the sweat and the veil. And now you see he wasn't the only one mismanaging funds. <laughs> it's bigger than Nino Brown. <laughs> so because I didn't want to delete anything up here, I want to erase this number one. Um, like that she was at, but uh, or, or your man Trump, he's handing himself in tomorrow. Right? We shall see. Talk about that. That was like that Dave Chappelle skit. Remember that? Yeah. When um he gave he gave a skit about like this a white collar criminal that stole like sixty billion dollars and he was going to jail, so he had to like call. They negotiated his surrender. He so like he had like his meal plan, and then they had like the drug dealer where they, they ran the crib at like four o'clock in the morning and. And kick the door down and like it's, it's a whole skit. If you've never seen it, it, it's actually a very true testament to the American justice system. I, I digress. A lot of truth and justice. Um, thank you. So let's edit this out. Let's take over and knock it on the door and play it in the show. Yeah, hit the like button and share. Yes, hit the like button and share. We're about to get into what everybody wants to know let's talk about this banking crisis let's take it step by step another one the latest exactly one, ubs acquires credit swiss for 3.2 billion um i'm gonna so bail out this is interesting i actually posted this on ig where uh they were actually rivals yes yes number one and number two yeah they, they were rivals for a while it's like bad boy was buying death row in 97 yeah yeah, yeah, very comparable. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Credit Suisse fell into some trouble over the last week or two. And um, this weekend, the government forced regulators, uh, the government regulators forced the sale, mm -hmm. um, gave them a, a deal that they couldn't refuse. The only deal was, uh, there was only one deal. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Uh, so, <laughs> this is your plan. So, um, if the company was valued at $8 billion market cap, um, they, they initial offer was $1 billion. They thought that was extremely disrespectful. Um, the friends at Saudi National Bank, um, which is the largest shareholder, mm -hmm. they yes. said, uh, don't do it, urged them not to do it, counted back with a two, two billion franc offer. Sheesh. They said, don't do it, settled for 3.2 billion. So, Three. 1 billion, 2 billion, 3 billion. This happened, I mean, this so, whole, how, 24 hours? Uh, yeah. Stock dropped 50%. Um, it's from Friday to Monday. And, the whole world is once again going crazy. 
another bank collapse. And this time, this is a global bank. This is a large institution with global partners, billions of dollars on the books. Okay, how does this? How does this one happen? <laughs> this is so scary because this reminds me exactly of 2008. But we're acting as if the house is on fire. Shit is um, out here. Wow. Back to one of There's the a entire ass ant on my computer. Thank you, sister. For everyone in the crypto space and everyone in the Bitcoin space who is meeting and saying, hey, uh, we need another currency to offset any potential losses or massive inflation. This is a prime example of why. Um, this is well, Credit Suisse has been a terrible company since the last recession. So the last time they had a high was in April of 2007, about seventy-nine dollars and twenty-nine cent. It's literally been falling apart ever since then. In 2010, it got to a high of fifty-nine dollars and sixty-six cent. Going back to the Slack thing. If Salesforce paid $27 billion for Slack, a piece of software, hmm. and Credit Suisse is only worth three, listen, if these banks internationally fell apart, then regionally we're having issues. You guys see that all the regional directors and regional CEOs went to go meet Warren Buffett. Warren is back to doing his JP, James Pierpont Morgan thing of bailing out the regional banks. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> But if we're having solvency issues, liquidity issues, we told you guys that you can't even take a certain amount of money out anymore mm -hmm. out of the bank. You have to order the money. There is a yep. big systemic issue with our banks. And for them to say- You kind of always had to order the money, though. I used to work in the bank. The FDIC, where if you have more than $250,000 in, we're going to just show up that money no matter what. I don't know where the money is, but it's not in the banks. No, it it not it, it's it's that, kids that's printed. the part like you know we talk about, and I saw somebody post they put up the most like like simple form meme, and it was like think about the process it takes for a retail just like a retail person like an everyday person yes to go to the bank and get a credit card like think about all you have to go through just to get approved for a credit card, and think about the process that these regulators for these banks have when they make an investments in like bonds and things like that yes. Like, there, if you just look at the investment a lot of the time, and that's what we were talking about last week, it was like, who was approving this? Like, hmm. what, what is the checks and balances when making these, when the banks are making these investments? You don't need one when you know you're going to get bailed out. Because it, it doesn't even make sense. Hmm. Right? Like, if there was, if we had a checklist for things that, even if we wanted to get a home, like a loan from the bank, the amount of things that the average person has to go through, hmm. and, and a lot of times we don't even get approved, right? If that type of stipulation was put in, into the banks themselves, would we even be in this situation? Like, and and, and you you said the word bailout, but they're not using the word bailout. Nope. Right. Like the the word that they're using is a commercial solution. Right. So the government says, "Look, this is the solution. You need to take this because there is no lead. You are going to take this. What are you supposed to do?" Well, you know what's so crazy is you gotta take. It. Well, first off, everybody hit the like button and share. This is live, guys. Yes. Um, I was talking to some people over the weekend, uh, and I realized that people um, are very disturbed when Market Mondays is not live. Uh oh. I don't know. Tell us why. Oh, information <laughs> is always live. I don't know. I'm not sure why. <laughs> they're, they're very sticklers. So here's my thing. I'm I'm okay. I, I'm fine. Well, that doesn't prove that. I'm just saying. This is a lot Eastern Standard Time. Spring. Yeah, and um, uh, somebody just said a commercial solution in the chat. Shout out to Juan. My thing is that I, I'm not opposed to it being live a lot, but we got to, if it's more viewers on the pre recorded than the live, then what? It allows for a better broadcast. So, media trade. Let's get the viewership up. Let's push this bad boy up to 7,000, and maybe we can have a string of live videos. So, live here we hit go. the like button and share. And we can see what we can do. Now, Real leaders of the financial movement wouldn't have to manipulate the audience for shots. <laughs> crowd manipulation, <laughs> uh, crowd participation. Wording is very important. So let's 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 commercial let's, solution. That's all right. we left over. A lot of people have been asking about Ally, and this is this is this is a, a, a legitimate question because we have championed them. Um, so it, it it is something that we should talk about. Yes. And 
I actually spoke to some of the people at Ally during South by Southwest, and I asked them. I said, well, are people are concerned? And this is what they told me. They said that we're in good financial standing. We won't fall to this issue for a variety of different reasons. They said that we're not a brick and mortar bank, mm -hmm. so we don't have the same level of expenses. Um, that, and that was a legitimate thing. They said we don't take the same risk that a lot of banks take as far as their investment. Mm -hmm. And that, that seemed like a legitimate thing. So we we'll monitor the situation. They told me that, and they gave me detailed reasons why. They don't. Well, one of which will say Warren Buffett has been investing heavily in Ally, quietly, for like the last two or three years. That is a sign of confidence for sure. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> so give it that uh, But yeah. For everything you need. <laughs> We're all better off with that. We're all better off with Ally. But another thing about this bank bailout situation is that I was watching something and they were saying that 6,000 people, that's all, that's all it takes to get people, 6,000 people on the, on the viewership. Now, that's all, yeah. now let's get it up to seven. Let's do the Kevin Samuels. Let's just stop talking. Let's try that trend. See how that works. <laughs> we're not asking for super chats. All we ask is for likes. Um, so the, the 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 bailout thing, and somebody said, like, um, you know, bailout got such a bad stigma that they stopped using the term bailout and they start using other words. They start playing around with words. Like what yeah. you say that they were using now? Commercial solution. Commercial solution. Like, ladies, it's the same thing when guys be like, hey, uh, maybe I <laughs> a polygamous relationship. The same thing. A swindle is a swindle called by any man. <laughs> Cap or corn. Um, so, so, you know, I, I was watching this documentary about, um, you know, how to control the masses. And one thing that was interesting is that they said that the word propaganda technically is not a bad word. But after Hitler's regime, you know, Hitler had a whole propaganda campaign. So they didn't want to use that. Like when the people, Sigmund Freud's nephew is the father of yep. all manipulation when it's propaganda. Yeah. So, but, so, every up. So when he started his campaign in America, he said, okay, we can't use the word propaganda because it has such a bad stigma. This is how they created public relations. Mm -hmm. So what we know is PR today was a spin just because they didn't want to use, but it's really propaganda. But he said public relations is a much better way to, to put it and this yeah. is something that the people will actually be interested in because you're naming it public relations. I say that to say this happens a variety of different times where something is just reworded. It's the same exact package. It's just reworded, and now it becomes appealing to the public. So you, as an intelligent person, be aware of things that are reworded in different packaging, but the same exact product, because it, it's not changing. It's yes. the, only the name and what they call it is changing. And that's done intentionally for a variety of different reasons, but mainly to have public support. All right. Can I give an example real quick? Recession. Yeah. Systemic risk. Everyone put this in chat. Systemic risk means we F the money up. So if you hear a bank say we are currently at systemic risk or volatility, volatility levels have hit all time highs, that means they have destroyed the company and F up the bat. <laughs> and they're to figure out a solution. Get more money years to offset the losses. Sure. It's like the word insolvent. We mm -hmm. broke. broke. We don't. We broke, bro. We don't have it, bro. I ain't yeah. got it. Yeah. We don't have it, bro. That's insolvent. We don't have it. I know we sell. We had it. We don't. Yeah, we're insolvent. Ran up yeah. on the plug twice. <laughs> Ran up on the plug twice. Um, Why are we gonna go through the same crash for the same reason? And it this keeps is happening. unbelievable. Make it, it make sense. Happening. Yeah. So, but if, if they don't have this commercial solution or like we know as a bailout, what happens to the economy? First in Switzerland, but then on a global scale. It, it, it falls the apart. Truth, the truth is they, okay. So in 99 through 2001, well, really 98 through 2002, the same thing happened. They overfunded tech ideas that were not amazing. So mm -hmm. you can swap out pets.com or Rivian Motors or Lucian Motors or whoever. We won't want to in this era. There was overfunding in the tech space because money was flowing easily. That caused the market to crash. At the I can't market. believe this is happening it's again. It's wow, shit. Things are not going well. Technically, since 2019, without all of this extra money supply being thrown out and ruining and quantitative easing, 
having to be forced back in to keep the market afloat. Like we're throwing all this money in to be like at break even or slightly. Mm -hmm. uh, traders, this is like if you blow up a hundred thousand dollar account, then you go borrow seven hundred thousand to offset that hundred thousand dollar loss, but at scale. Mm -hmm. It's the same problem from before. The truth is we need to let some of these companies catch on fail. Yes. And I'll talk about it later tonight. But we need to fund more women-based companies and more companies that actually provide real solutions opposed to just going through all, all these angel competitions that are just slushing money around endlessly that keep propagating the same issue. Bruh, like I know I hit restore like thing. three times. 2007 to 2008 and calling it something else and acting like we're not going through the same issues as before. It's heartbreaking. Yo, this, this, so this is, I want to give like content to this because when I read this, I'm like, oh, wow. All right, so this is by the numbers. So UBS is buying credit suites for roughly negative 14 billion, right? It's paying the 3.2 billion to credit suites shareholders, but only because Swiss regulators are wiping out 17.2 billion of the bank's liabilities, even though bondholders with nothing. Yes. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> they, like, okay, and from, from even a 20, if you go to the tickers TOT, so you guys can go look. The bond market, the 20 year bond was at 179.70. The bond market is at 105. Last year it got to a low of 91 bucks. They destroyed the bond market, which is like the slowest and safest investment that you can't have. And that shit is down and to like 3% from 10%. And equities and real estate and. <laughs> Same time as soon Same as damn time. You think that just happened accidentally overnight? Like, oh, no, by happenstance? No. We need this is the time I'm gonna agree with Kramer. They are nuts, they know nothing. We need full change. We need a full regime change to top to bottom. They said, oh <laughs> um this is unbelievable, man. Shout out to JP Morgan and Goldman and everybody. <laughs> Y'all gotta make some changes though. 6,300 people. We're making progress. Uh -oh. Hey, let's put the bikes up. away. Let's see. Yo. <laughs> it's an uphill battle. Hit the like button and share. Okay. First Republic Bank. Let's talk about some, some First domestic Republic banks. Bank falls um, to its all-time low. Yeah. Right now. So is this a good time to buy it? Or will this be the next, the next contestant? Hey, 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 can I give you some, can I get some will context? This, will this be the yes, next please. contestant over the boat? Be thrown over the boat? I'm going to reference what we talked about last week. <laughs> probability. I'm going to just give context here. So the bank, right? First Republic Bank has tumbled 90% over the past month. Jeez. 90%. 80% since March 8th. Why the dip? This These guy. thoughts are Rashad Bilal. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we just talk, spoke about money being insured. And when there's regional banks and we see it as we be uh, and, and we, we we saw what happened there, people start going to get their money. Now, mm -hmm. this statistic is very important. 68% of the money, the deposits that deposits that are in First Republic were uninsured. 68%. Mm -hmm. When people, <laughs> right? Can you tell us what that means? So that means after $250,000, right? Like that, that is guaranteed to you by the bank. If something happens to the bank, they guarantee that. Anything over that limit. It's a busy. Look, well, we don't have it. Yes. We don't have it. And so 70% of the money that's inside these banks is not insured. Well, if I see regional banks going down because of liquidity issues, then the first thing that I'm thinking as a customer is, okay, I need to take my money out. <laughs> I have to go get my money as fast as possible. Now, what that does for regional banks, it tanks to regional banks. So yes. The inverse of that is what does it do? To this looks terrible, but I don't care. What does it do to Bank of America? What does it do to Chase? It makes them go up. More money gets put to those banks. And so if we're thinking about... Wells Fargo going under, though. I'm going to just look at what everyone else would say. Wells Fargo is... Terrible bank. I used to work for them. Based on what was happening with regional banks, just for more context, Bank of America received $15 billion in deposits last week. Alone. Just Bank of America. So, all right. So They're not even good. What you're saying, essentially, is that when... As long as is more money coming in than going out, it's okay. But as soon as it reverses and there's more money that is going out than is going in, everything falls apart. Potentially. That's a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> 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 Listen, 
Dress, dress it up and call it anything. They wild today. And listen, the people are not stupid. Like, when you have a feeling that something isn't right, and we haven't all been able to put our finger on it, but it's like, how is everything falling apart and then the banks are worried? I've never, in a recession or dramatic pullback like this, seen so many bank executives also be quiet. They also have a rolled out Warren Buffett to say the American economy is stronger than ever. This is when you know the economy is good. He's going to be on with Becky Quick Shot. Look at Becky on CNBC. He's going to have a little Coca Cola cup and he's going to say, no, the American economy is stronger than ever. Me and Charlie have been sitting around discussing if you hold the SP for 80 years, everything we haven't said a few words yet. That's what you know is that they're coming to him and they flew to Omaha, I think 20 banks, and they're working out a deal right 11. now. 11. Too big to fail. That was a whole ass movie already. Dollar deposit into First Republic. We have to stabilize them and keep them alive because we don't. We can't have people talking like this. We don't want anybody talking like this guy. And so they're putting money into those banks, into the banks to say, all right, let's stabilize it, let's keep it afloat. And when we kept saying, hey, these artists are selling their rights to their catalog for a reason, this is no different than Sony buying up all the small labels or when Def Jam was partnering with Rockefeller and Bernie Inc. and Rough Riders back in the day, it's the same process. Please write this in chat. Consolidate, mass consolidation is a way to form a quiet monopoly. Yeah, so now, it's happening bank, everywhere. Come to me and say, hey, your bank's going to go out of business. I'm going to give you some capital. Be me up, Scotty. I'm giving you that capital for free, or now do I have a vested interest in your business? And now the, um, parts of your business, or you have to pay me a dividend for a certain period of time. This is the easiest way for the too big to fail banks to become even bigger. That's why I always say, if it's not in the top three, don't touch it. Anything else can have risk because you're not just worried about when things are good. You have to focus your portfolio. What do you do when it's hell on earth? Who will survive? In a banking space, always going to be JP Morgan, going to be Goldman, mm -hmm. Morgan Stanley, BlackRock, Blackstone. And then Bank of America is like, is like B tier, like, it's like Austin Reeves on the Lakers right now, cooking, but still, still, still not wrong. Like, I love Brian Moynihan. Big fan, but Bank of America is not like a is not the big player in this space. And even if you mix this the nope. recession two thousand eight, they went from two fifty three to a high of forty nine bucks. They're currently at twenty seven. Great if you invest from two thousand and eight, but if you invest in twenty twenty at around like nineteen bucks, you haven't seen that much gain. Safe, but they're not the biggest player in this space. Consolidation, mass consolidation is the easiest way to do it. In five I got a question for both of you, maybe you like some insight. So there's been some talks about the FDIC raising that that uh, insured amount from 250 to a different number. I know some numbers have been going out. All right. So everything is white. These are all the products that we have. I'd say we need like one more product like right here. So more than likely I'll create like, hey, the adult one is missing. We don't even have to add. I was going to say. Once we do that, we are all set and good to go, baby. What, what is the number? How long do you think that will take to happen? And is it a feasible thing? Because prior to 2008, I didn't even add the juvenile on this. Prior to 2008, it was only 100,000. Now, 100 grand. 100,000. And so after that, why isn't that showing up? 2008, it was raised to 250. Now we're seeing hmm. regional banks, what's happening right now. Do you think? That there will be an increase in the amount of money that is assured from the FDIC. I think it'll be an increase for a variety of different reasons. Um, inflation um, will play a factor, and then yeah, as far as you know, having some level of more security um, for hmm. the public. Once again, you got to be able to secure the public. So that I wonder why that's not popping should up. Should happen probably. Um, because I guess it's just a matter of how much. Both well, master flex boys lies. They worship Tim. <laughs> yeah. Is it feasible? No, it's not feasible, but will they raise the limit? Yes. I'm going to talk to the ladies real quick. Ladies, you know when we mess up and we get to cheat, you know, we're like, baby, I do whatever you tell me, right? Y'all make the long list of what you need us to do. Troy's never been there because he, he's smart. Me and All right. So I'm all set. 
for the night. Why didn't, okay, come on, add it. We would be all set after this one. We got eight products added and I'm just happy to be on deck. I hope that you enjoyed this today. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask, inquire, leave the comment here. Otherwise, it's been real. I'm getting back to Market Mondays and minding my business. Peace.